Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so I've had a lot of requests on how to utilize your power on and off, or how to install your power on and off for your RetroPie system. So today we're going to look at that. I'm going to go over doing the install for the script, and then also for those of you who already have the script installed, or just, you know, are following along on this, I'm going to show you how to attach your button or where the button needs to be attached. So pretty easy peasy. Let's get started here. There's going to be a couple things you're going to need. Um, I would highly recommend, I'm going to put a Google document link in the description for the power button script, and we're going to follow this step by step. It's only going to take a few minutes. Um, and then the other thing you're going to need is you are going to need PuTTY. So download PuTTY. Uh, link will be in the description for that as well. So let's go ahead and get this party started. We're going to go ahead and open up PuTTY. And boom. So now with PuTTY, our host name, you're either going to want to look up your IP address, which you would go to... Um, you know your RetroPie setup, and then you know there's there will be an option toward the bottom that says show IP address. Look for that, or just type in RetroPie, and then go ahead and click open. If it doesn't open up the terminal asking for your username and password by putting in RetroPie, you will need to find your IP address. Sometimes it can be a little finicky, but it should just work. So opening up. Now we do have we do have where it's asking us to log in, so we will type in pi pi, enter. Password is going to be Raspberry. So boom, there we go. Now everything's numbered in here. You're just going to follow it step by step. So highlight the first, copy it. Typically, if you just right-click in your box over here, it'll just paste it and then hit enter and let it go through its stuff. Now, since we have the prompt again, we'll go ahead and move on to step two. And I would, I would definitely recommend just keeping in mind highlighting the last thing you did. That way you know, okay, the next thing needs to be highlighted to move forward. That way you don't get confused or lost because some of these steps could take, you know, a minute, you know, or so. And you don't want to get lost thinking, wait, what was the last thing I did? So just keep it a progression. Highlight, paste, highlight the next one, paste. That's, that's the way I would recommend doing it. That way you can keep tabs and make sure you're not repeating steps or screwing anything up. Okay, so to keep going forward... We want to install Python 3, boom, let her go. It's going to ask, do you want to continue? Yes. Okay, so moving forward, that took a minute or two. Boom, easy peasy. Now we want to get the, the rpi.gpo, so we will go ahead and copy and paste this. There we go. Now we're going to go ahead and uncompress that. That is done. Now we're going to want to change directory to that. 
We are now in that directory as it shows the purple font with the money sign. We're in that directory, so good to go to move forward. Pseudo Python setup, install. Hit enter. Give that a moment. Moving forward. We do have to set up this. Oops, didn't copy the whole thing, so it gave me an error. Make sure you pay close attention to that. Don't be a fool like me. So that time successful, because I paid attention. Now we want to create our directory, so make directory, and it's going to be, that's going to be the file path, and we're just naming it scripts. Copy and paste, hit enter. Now we made that directory. Now we want to go ahead and make our script. Copy and paste this. And that's going to go ahead and make that script in that new folder we just created. Boom. So now we have this open and we're going to copy and paste all of the following. Make sure you don't miss anything. Get all the way down to here where it says time.sleep. So we're going to need all of this in there. So copy and paste that. Bam. And then we're going to we're going to want to go ahead. We're moving down to this this section here. So we've created our script. Everything's in there. Hold or press control X. Control X. Save modified buffer. Yes, file name to overwrite, just hit enter, we're good to go. We already named it shutdown.py, so we made that. So now the next thing we're going to want to do, only two more steps, and we're done. So let's go ahead and reboot, and then do the final step. So we're going to type in sudo reboot, or if you want to be lazy, you can go ahead and copy and paste this into there. But sudo reboot, hit enter. It's going to give us a warning all of a sudden. Server unexpectedly closed network connection. Oh my god, it's the end of the world. No, don't trip. Just hit OK. Bam. Now we're going to... We're going to allow our Raspberry Pi to reboot. Okay, so now that our Raspberry Pi has completely rebooted, we're going to want to re-log into Putty. So login is pi, password raspberry, bam. So we're good to go there. Last step, config the script to run at startup. So we're gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. Hit enter. It's gonna go ahead and open up our document. Okay, so while we're in here, the next thing we're gonna do, and the last thing essentially we're gonna do, is copy and paste this. Pseudo Python. Make sure you get the whole thing. So we're gonna copy that. Now within this document, you are gonna have to click over, make sure you're in there, and that the pound sign on the left is highlighted green. And you're gonna press down until you get the exit, hit enter. Go back up to that blank spot and then go ahead and paste that in there. So we pasted that right above the exit. This possibly could look different depending upon your setup and you know whatever else is going on with your system. But as long as you put this at the bottom, right above where it says exit zero, you will be good. So from there, let's go ahead and press Control X. Save modified buffer, yes. File name to write, rc.local. We're leaving it as is, so just hit enter. And now we're good. So essentially everything is done. We can go ahead and reboot our system. 
go ahead and let her reboot. And now we will go ahead and take a quick look on how to attach your power button. And that's going to be it. Easy peasy, very simple to do. Let's dive in, take a quick look at the power button. Okay guys, so the final part to attach a button to your Raspberry Pi to use as a power on and off switch. Essentially, you're going to want to use any kind of momentary s switch. As an example, it would be an arcade button. You can also buy smaller, you know, switches. You know, anything that's going to make that momentary circuit is going to work. Um, using a button like this with a micro switch is perfect for an arcade or, you know, bar top. Um, if you're using like a custom case or whatnot, you might want to get a smaller button. But this is just an example because essentially it's all going to work the same regardless. So what you would do is, for example, if you're doing the arcade route, you would have a micro switch. Micro switch plugs into the button. This side, there's you could barely see it in this image, but there's a little nub that's actually the button that makes the uh, the, the the momentary circuit. So when the button is pressed, there's a tab that will press this button in. And then there's essentially a copper spring. It's not really a spring, but essentially that's what it is on the inside that makes the connection. And then what you have here, a lot of these micro switches will have three connections here. This one is normally open. This one is normally closed, so you do not use this. You'll just attach your cables, one here and one here. So just these these two spots. Cable plug attaches here, the quick disconnect. The other cable attaches here. This one is ignored. So then you're going to have two leads. Typically, a lot of these arcade buttons, they'll come with, you know, where the, the cable is attached to one, one uh, connection, which is fine. That's going to work on this because you're not separating it. So what you would do is you would take those those two leads and you would go, go down to here on your on your board. You're going to go for GPIO pin 6 and 5. So the third down, if you're looking at your your pie from this direction, not the first set, not the second set, it will be the third set of pins five and six so that's where you would plug in your momentary switch plug that bad boy in once the system has been powered up the first time you know just a normal power up by plugging it in freshly your button will work as long as it stays plugged in as long as there's still power to it so as long as you keep it plugged in you press your, your button system powers on press it again your system powers off you really want to ensure that you're doing a safe shutdown if you're not doing a safe shutdown your memory can become corrupt you can have issues in the long run so this is definitely highly recommended to do you can also shut down within the system which is a pain in the, the butt this on the other hand just a flip of the switch good to go so I hope you guys appreciate it smash that like button if you can Subscribe if you're not a subscriber already. Hit me up, comments, questions, concerns, ideas for future videos, ideas for games to play, things you guys want to, you know, want me to cover, whatever it may be, tutorials, games, anything. Hit me up. Appreciate it, guys. I will catch y'all next time. Boom.